Hello everyone, Fanta here, you're watching Fantavision, and today I'm talking about Nintendo. Now, I like Nintendo games a lot, they make some of the best games ever. I mean, I'm wearing a Majora's Mask hat, I've got a Pokemon thing back here. However, they are the pettiest company out there, I swear to God, they must be the pettiest video game company to have ever existed. I can't think of another company that could hold that title. I mean, think about it. They used to go after YouTubers for having any of their footage in their video just so they could claim the ad revenue. That's pathetic. They go after fans who love their company so much that they devote hundreds of hours to make these fan-made games and they shut them down. Instead of working with them, like the Sonic company did to make Sonic Mania and plenty of other companies have, instead of working with these people, they shut them down. I don't understand that. Why would they do that? Why wouldn't they embrace these Nintendo fans that are so just devoted to their games that they will make their own in the Nintendo style? I don't understand it. And then number three, they have been going after different ROM and emulation sites for years. And they've been suing them for millions of dollars. They're ruining these people's lives who are basically just trying to archive and make it easy to play Nintendo games because Nintendo refuses to do so. And the thing is, Nintendo has gone even pettier, and that's why I'm making this video. Because, of course, I've talked about these ROM sites and how they're taking them down in the past and how it's annoying, it makes no sense, but they're being so petty about this most recent one that they're making the owner of a ROM website destroy every single copy of Nintendo games, of movies, of any unauthorized Nintendo intellectual property that he owns. And he's also not allowed to play unauthorized Nintendo games anymore, which means he's no longer allowed by the court, he is prohibited by the court, to play emulated games. Any unauthorized Nintendo game, not allowed to play it. So the owner of ROM Universe not only is out $2.1 million, he can't even play any of his ROMs, and he most likely has to destroy hard drives. I'm sure he can just delete it, but maybe Nintendo will still come after him after that and be like, hey, there might be copies on there still. We don't believe you. Burn it. I don't know what they're going to do. I really don't. And the fact that they have, he has to prove it in court that he's destroyed all these things is just absurd. I mean, let's take a look at all of these other industries and what happened when this sort of thing was a problem. So the music industry, yeah, there were a lot of people that were sued and there were a lot of sites that were taken down, but the industry as a whole evolved. They evolved past that. We don't really hear about that sort of thing anymore. And that's because they learned, whoa, instead of just going after a couple individuals and going after websites, they learned that if they evolved the entire industry to meet consumer demands, they would make a ton of money, which is why iTunes became a thing. And all those different websites that came out where you could just buy music digitally, it made it very easy for people, and that did cut down on piracy. It still existed until music streaming came out. When they evolved to have music streaming, I don't know who, I don't know who pirates anymore. I really don't. There's no reason to pirate music anymore when you can just pay a small monthly payment to have everything. It's such a pain now to pirate as opposed to just streaming music. Hell, you don't even have to pay a monthly service. You can just listen to ads and just listen to all the music you want. So what they did was they made it more difficult to go the illegal route than the legal one. So now there's really not that much of an issue with piracy. So let's look at the PC gaming market because that was another market that yes, still has piracy, but the amount of piracy has gone down drastically with the invention of Steam. Valve saw that there was an empty gap in the market and they saw that there was a problem with piracy. And GOG saw the same thing and all these other websites that came after saw that let's just make it easier to purchase than it is to steal. And that's what they did. They made this platform where they put games for really cheap and constantly had sales and they integrated it into a social platform that you want to play with your friends, you want to get these achievements, you want to show off your game library and that's why Steam drastically reduced the amount of piracy. Now, 
Of course, there's a gray market, but that's a completely different issue. When it comes to piracy as a whole, we saw a big, steep decline because they made it more convenient. That's the thing. Convenience is key in everything. That's why you see vending machines way more than you'd buy it at a store for products because it's convenient. And that's what these platforms have done. That's what music streaming did. Hell, that's what video streaming did with Netflix. With all these different streaming platforms, you just see a huge decline in piracy because now it's so much easier to just do it legally. Now, that might change in the future with video streaming because there's too many damn platforms. But again, it's another topic for another time. I'm bouncing all over the place. Coming back to Nintendo, they could solve this issue by being convenient. That was my whole point of bringing up all of those other examples. They made it convenient by bringing the product to the customer in an easy to purchase way. At most of the times, a very fair price. Nintendo has so many classic games that they're trying to protect by stopping all these emulation sites instead of just making them available. All they have to do is make these games available and I swear their problem would be gone overnight. All of these people that are emulating things, it's because it's such a pain in the ass to get the real thing. And the thing is, is that they're buying the real thing anyway. Nintendo's not getting any money. If you buy a used GameCube game, who gets the money? The seller on eBay, that's it. Why do they care? I genuinely don't understand why Nintendo cares so much and is fighting so hard against emulation when they themselves are not selling their own games. It pisses me off to no end that there's literally no way to get most of these games besides emulation because Nintendo refuses to make them available. People have been shouting for a virtual console since they stopped having one because people were buying games off the virtual console. I know I did. I know plenty of people who did. And I know a lot more people would if there was a virtual console again. And there are so many different titles that they can make available and make a windfall of cash. But for some reason, Nintendo always looks at the most obvious option and just decides not to do it. Despite the fact that that obvious option would make them a ton of money. So, I don't know. I, I don't understand the mindset of Nintendo here. I get that a lot of people are going to comment down below, oh, it's their lawyers doing a bunch of work. It doesn't matter. Nintendo shouldn't even be focusing on these emulation sites. All it does is make them look bad. All they'd have to do is make them available, and they'd make a ton of money, and they'd look great because they'd finally be giving back what people have been wanting for so long. They had a virtual console, not a great one, on the Wii. Why did you get rid of it? There was a virtual console on the Wii U. There was a virtual console on the 3DS. Why did you get rid of it? I don't understand. It makes no sense to me. If you had these things in the past and you sold your games in the past, why are you not doing it now? And if you go, well, you know, they've got those NES games and those SNES games that are included in your Nintendo online subscription, you get like a couple, okay? And it's still, put all of them on there. Why are they slowly trickling them out? They're, they're files, they're emulation files that can be easily just thrown on there. It's so simple, and yet they just won't do it, and I don't understand why. So many people would rebuy so many of their classics if they just made it available, and that's all they have to do, but I guarantee they'll never do it. They just won't. They won't even release a Nintendo 64 classic console. They just won't. I don't understand why. They only like the NES and the Super Nintendo, and then they're just done. I don't know. They had so many other great games after that, so many N64 games, so many GameCube games that the retail, like if you're trying to buy it, the resell price, the market has gone insane. Emulation, in my opinion at this point, because they refuse to sell their own games is fine. They're not getting the money if you buy a used copy. I don't get why anybody would say that it's wrong to emulate at this point. If they make it readily available to buy, I will buy it. But until then, Emulation is the only way to play a lot of their classics without spending hundreds of dollars on eBay that isn't even going to Nintendo anyway. So let me know what you guys think in the comments down below about this whole situation. I'm sure I pissed off a lot of Nintendo fanboys and the like to dislike ratio is going to be really fun, but please do like the video if you just, I don't know, thought it was at least interesting and subscribe for more content. There's of course more content coming and even if one of our favorite companies is super petty, have a Fanta. Fantastic day. See you, everybody.